Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 8th of July. India's PM Modi brings in fresh faces in cabinet reshuffle amid COVID crisis. Journalists in Pakistan protest against low curbing press freedom. And Sri Lanka holds policy rates to support sustained economic recovery. And now for all the details. Four terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit were killed in two separate gun battles with security forces in Kulgam and Pulwama districts of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday, police said. This came a day after one of the top commanders of Pakistan-based Hizbul Mujahideen terror group was gunned down in another encounter in Handwara district on Wednesday. Security forces killed four local terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit in India's Jammu and Kashmir in two separate encounters on Thursday. One of the operations was in the Pulwama district, where the terrorists were hiding in a village. When asked to surrender, they opened fire on the security forces and were killed in the ensuing encounter, police said. The other incident foiled an attack bid, said police. The terrorists were hiding in a house in Kulgam district and had planned to attack the national highway. The army and Kulgam police had an ambush and the ambush had killed both terrorists. Both are local terrorists and the LAT is attacked. The other thing was that the Pulwam was coming from the Pulwam. पुच्छल एक विलेज है वहाँ भी खबर था कि दो टेरिस्ट है तो वहाँ पर पुलिस सीआरपी आर ने मिलके कॉर्डन डाला कॉर्डन डालने के बाद उन्होंने सेंटर करने कहा गया दोनों मिलते सेंटर नहीं किया बाद में अंदर से फायरिंग आया फायरिंग का जवाब दिया गया उस इनकाउंटर में दोनों टेरिस्ट मारे गए थर्सडेज इनकाउंटर कम्स अ डे आफ्टर मेहराजुद्दीन हलवाई वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट एंड टॉप कमांडर्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान बेस्ड हिजबुल मुजाहिदीन टेरर ग्रुप वॉज गन डाउन इन एन इनकाउंटर इन हंडवारा डिस्ट्रिक्ट on Wednesday morning. Pakistan has been responsible for training and infiltrating terrorists to mount attack on Indian soil for several years now. Despite India's charges with proof of supporting militancy in the area, Pakistan denies the allegations. A day after the reboot of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's cabinet, a number of newly appointed ministers took charge of office including Mansukh Mandavia, the new health minister and Ashwini Vaishnav, the new IT minister. The first reshuffle since Prime Minister Modi was re-elected in 2019 came amid fierce criticism of the government's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday appointed new federal ministers for health, IT and oil as part of a reshuffle in a bid to re-invigorate his government amid fierce criticism of its handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Several members of the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party were sworn in at the presidential palace to replace 12 ministers in the first cabinet reshuffle since PM Modi was re-elected in 2019. The newly appointed ministers on Thursday took charge of their assignments including Mansukh Mandavya, the new health minister, and Kiran Rijiju, the new minister for law and justice, who was previously the sports minister. I am entering this room for the first time and it is definitely a huge challenge for me and a responsibility to discharge my function as the Minister for Law and Justice of this country. Meanwhile, Ashwini Vaishnav was appointed the new Information and Technology Minister, replacing Ravi Shankar Prasad, who had been leading the government's efforts to persuade US social media giants to comply with the country's IT laws. Amid a hike in fuel prices, Hardeep Singh Puri has been appointed Oil Minister, replacing Dharmendra Pradhan.
PM Modi has, however, retained the core team at the Foreign, Finance, Interior and Defence Departments amid widespread concerns that a surge in COVID-19 infections will stall economic recovery. In news from Pakistan, a union of Pakistani journalists recently held a protest in Lahore city against a controversial bill passed by the Punjab Assembly that has provisions that undermine press freedom. Although Pakistan says it supports freedom of speech, rights activists often accuse its security agencies of harassing and attacking journalists. Scores of Pakistani journalists held a protest in the city of Lahore recently against the passage of the controversial Punjab Assembly Privileges Bill 2021 that has provisions that target press freedom. The protesting journalists said the anti-democratic bill undermines press freedom by awarding three-month imprisonment or a fine of rupees 10,000 or both for publishing any report on the proceedings or a report of a committee before it is reported to the assembly. The arrests can be made without a warrant at any place within the precincts of the assembly. <laughs> A report released this week by media watchdog Reporters Without Borders lists Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan among world's 37 worst rulers when it comes to press freedom. It states the cases of brazen censorship are legion since Khan became Prime Minister following parliamentary elections in 2018. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. As Taliban continue to launch their offensive as US-led foreign forces withdraw after two decades of war in Afghanistan and Afghan forces rest back in surgeons' control, US has urged Afghanistan's neighbors to play a constructive role in Afghan peace talks in order for there to be a just and durable peace in the country. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price at a press briefing on Wednesday urged Afghanistan's neighbors to play a constructive role in Afghan peace talks in order for there to be a just and durable peace in the country. This comes at a time when the Afghan delegation are holding talks with a group of Afghan politicians led by former Vice President Yunus Kanuni, who have traveled to Tehran from Kabul. Iran's foreign ministry in a tweet confirmed that the intra-Afghan dialogue summit opened on Wednesday morning and Afghan government delegation met with Taliban representatives. Afghanistan's neighbors need to play a constructive role. Uh, what Iran is trying to do or in the, is in the process of doing by hosting this meeting uh, may um, well um, be constructive. I think the jury is, is still out. Uh, this is obviously not something uh, we are uh, we have discussed uh, with the Iranians uh, other than um, by, by making the point very um, publicly that Afghanistan's neighbors need to be responsible stakeholders. The Taliban launched their offensive as U.S.-led foreign forces withdrew after two decades so far. U.S. troops abandoned their main base Bagram airfield earlier this week, a pullout that is raising concerns about a civil war there. Many Afghan women are also concerned about a possible imposition of restrictions on them as a result of peace agreement with the Taliban. Rights groups have been asking the U.S. State Department and the White House to add up to 2,000 visas specifically for vulnerable women and women's advocates to a developing policy plan to evacuate 1,000 Afghans after the U.S. military pullout this month. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's central bank left its key policy rates steady on Thursday as the island nation's economic recovery weakens on account of the disruptions caused by the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka kept the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate at 4.50% and 5.50% respectively. The statutory reserve ratio was also left unchanged at 2%. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka, CPSL, held key policy rates steady on Thursday 
noting that disruptions caused by a third wave of COVID-19 infections during the second quarter had hindered the island nation's economic recovery. The central bank left its standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate at 4.50% and 5.50% respectively. The statutory reserve ratio was also left unchanged at 2%. Following the raid decision, Governor W.D. Lakshman expressed confidence that Sri Lanka could avoid seeking a bailout from the International Monetary Fund despite running down foreign exchange reserves to support a rupee that has lost over 7% against the dollar since the start of the year. The CBSL statement said that Sri Lanka's economic recovery had been weakened by a third wave of COVID-19 infections during the second quarter of the year. But it went on to predict that the ongoing vaccination drive and the likely relaxation of restrictions on people's movement would enable the economy to grow by around 5% in 2021, following last year's 3.6% contraction. In news from Bangladesh, the construction of the largest and the first ever green fertilizer factory in Bangladesh is being carried out in full seeing, adhering to COVID-19 protocols. The mega project once completed will help the country meet the growing demand of fertilizers in its efforts to ensure food security. The construction of Ghorashal Polash Urea Fertilizer Project, Bangladesh's largest and first ever green fertilizer factory in Narsingri district, has been carrying on smoothly despite the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 300 engineers and skilled workers from the China National Chemical Engineering and Construction Corporation 7 Limited, in collaboration with its Japanese partner Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, have been working round the clock to complete the mega project by the year 2023. Officials said disinfection practices are duly performed at the site to ensure safety of all those involved. There are many projects in Bangladesh where the Chinese government and Chinese private uh, personnel industries and uh, uh, businessmen, they are investing in Bangladesh. Chinese government helping Bangladesh government for development. With an estimated daily production capacity of 2,800 metric tons, officials said the factory will help Bangladesh meet the growing demand of fertilizers in its efforts to ensure food security once completed. Three cubs were born to a snow leopard in an eastern Indian zoo this April, raising the members of the big cat family in the zoo to 12. The cubs were seen enjoying as they played with each other this week. Three snow leopard cubs born at a zoological park in Darjeeling city of India's West Bengal state were seen enjoying at the zoo as they played with each other on Wednesday. The cubs played with ropes inside their enclosure. Dharma Dao Rai, director of the zoological park, said the zoo also acts as a captive breeding centre and authorities would be releasing the snow leopards into the wild as their numbers rise. Uh, three snow leopard cubs that were born, they have almost completed 90 days. The cubs, they are very healthy and very playful, as you can see in the shared video clip. Another cub, uh, which was born to uh, snow leopard morning, he is also doing very The snow leopard is classified as vulnerable by the IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List of Threatened Species. The big cats are rarely seen in the wild, let alone within city limits. The snow leopard has grey or white fur with black spots and a bushy tail and its population is distributed across a wide area including mountainous regions of Russia, Mongolia, China, Nepal, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.